Starting with white. How to paint a lure by me. I'm gonna try to go over a lot in this video. This could all end up being pretty simple. I don't know. I'm just gonna explain stuff well. Why can't I ever take myself seriously? The airbrush that you use is important for painting lures. This one is where it's at. Change my mind. Better yet, don't, I don't care. I don't wanna hear about anything else. I don't care about your airbrush. Anyway. Shake your paints, fellas. So when it comes to an airbrush, there are some attributes that you are looking for. There's some highly desired things that you want your airbrush to be able to do. This is one of them. Make an extremely thin line. You're looking for consistency. Like you don't want this line to be broken up and sketchy. There's two breaks right there and there, but that's because I moved my finger and I could feel it. Is that focusing? Are you guys focused on that? Pay attention, guys. That line's better because I had the, the trigger pulled back a little more and I was giving it more paint so you can get more consistent. Um, also, you wanna be able to do this. Fully atomized, very, very um, consistent overspray. Like any airbrush can do this and just put out a buttload of paint and smear and stuff, but that overspray is your ability to blend with an airbrush, and you want that overspray to be very consistent. Like this is just such a consist, this is just such a cons, Ugh. what the heck? This is just such a consistent airbrush. It's just amazing. It's my favorite airbrush. I don't care about your airbrush. I only have one airbrush on my mind, and that's the Iwata HP CS Eclipse with the top feeder thing. I don't like the bottles hanging off the bottom and stuff. Maybe you do, it might not make a difference. I've never used one. Maybe I'm not educated enough to use one, I don't know, but. If you don't have this one, your airbrush sucks. Next, lures. You can think of painting lures as, like you just put the colors where they need to be, which is a very simple way of going about it, but it works. You'll end up with a lure that has the colors where they need to be. But then you can also think of it as you're layering everything and all the colors are just blending into each other and you're building it up, patterns, and you're just building up layers. That's how I think of it. That's what lure painting is to me. You have a three-dimensional object that you're spraying layers of paint over and building it up. Kind of abstract, doesn't explain a lot but I felt like saying it that way. So next layer on this bait, I'm going with a light blue. This, the whole thing is not light blue, but I'm painting this whole bait light blue right now. I think I'm doing a sunfish. Oh, I need to go, I need to tell you about PSI and stuff and paint, how thin it needs to be. One sec. I have a lot of paint. I have all of the Wicked Createx airbrush colors and then I have all of the normal Createx colors. And I'm starting to build up a collection of Candy 2O auto colors. This stuff's great. I don't thin anything up here before I shoot it. I forgot to clean out my airbrush. If you're, if anywhere from 30 PSI to like 50, you can shoot at 60. I mean, you can shoot at 200, but I don't, you don't need to, but 30 to like 50 PSI, all of these paints, this airbrush will shoot just fine. If you're having problems, it's your fault. You should probably just give up because this, this airbrush handles all this. I think that explains it all, what I was going for there. The only time I actually do use reducer is if I'm painting with a brush by hand and I need the paint to be thinner. I've never even used this to lighten up a color. You just spray less on the bait. It's very simple, all of this. You don't have to be real stingy about like making sure your paints are just a certain consistency and really thin layers and stuff. It's like you can be that way, but then you're just that way. Good for you, but maybe it's not good for you. You ever think about that? If being that way is good for you or not, it's probably not. You should probably just squirt the stuff out the bottle into your airbrush and spray it. And it's nice and easy and lo low stress. You don't have to think about stuff. Anywho, this is gonna get a clear coat now. We just painted this blue and that's it. Clear coat. Layers. Remember, that's what this is. You're just putting layers of paint on three-dimensional objects. Because obviously I did not just put the colors in the correct spot. 
I put the color over the whole thing and now stuff's gonna get masked off and stenciled and effects will happen. It's my favorite paint scheme, by the way, a long-eared sunfish. I remember the first one I ever made, some guy in California has it. It was a swim bait. Seven inch swim bait, long-eared sunfish. Might have a picture of it, I'll put it up right now. Clear coat. I guess clear coat is part of painting. It's part of the finish of the bait, it matters. An ugly, crappy clear coat will ruin your bait. This is just Alumalite UV. UV light makes it cure. Convenient for lure making. So it's been a while. Time to set this clear coat. It helps to look directly into the bulbs the entire time with your own eyes. Just stare at the bulbs the whole time, and it'll speed up the clear coating process. Just kidding. Don't do that. Oh there, guys. Don't do it. It's the next day. No, it's two days later. I did bonus fishing yesterday. It went just about as you would expect. I have a whopper plopper, because I'm addicted to buying lures. And I have new shop lights that I am going to install before I finish this video. You can't just have these bad boys sitting around and not install them. The longer I do YouTube, the more and more it's a necessity that a video comes out. So if you don't like watching shop lights be installed, first of all, you're the one with the problem. I need to stop being mean. <laughs> I've been very mean in this video. These are Amazon shop lights, 12 of them, LEDs. Quite the gamble. I see there's no packaging foam or bubble wrap or anything whatsoever. They're just in a box. That's nice. Man, we're gonna have so much light in here. This is gonna be so easy because they just have the holes right there and they're completely accessible with a drill. You just put a screw in there and mount them to your studs. And I'll just get back to you guys when this is done because this is boring now. Not that it wasn't boring before. Just making sure that that does not flicker on camera. LED lights can flicker at a certain frame rate. I need to look at this on the computer to make sure. I'm gonna analyze the data on the computer. We're good. That was a bit of a gamble too. I didn't know how to know if it does that or not, so it doesn't. You guys ever notice on the Whopper Plopper packaging, old Larry just gilled the crap out of that small mouth and it's bleeding like all down its side. I wonder if they edited that to like make it not bleed as much, but he's just standing there like, Whopper plopper. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Okay, I thought I might have seen some, like, these lights having an effect. Just checking, still checking. Checking, checking. Does it screw with the audio? Got the microphone right next to one. I'm seeing, like, black bars come down the screen. Are you guys seeing that? This might not be good, which would really suck. Testing. One, two, three. I'm videoing with my phone now. I might have to use my phone for videos. This one ends up having this, this problem. Bars that scroll up and down, or mostly just up. That is so annoying. Uh, hey, bad news. Shot some video on my phone and, uh, didn't turn out too well. And I got this far, but by it didn't turn out too well, I mean like I can't use the footage and put it on my computer and edit it and make it part of the video. So we're in the future now. Uh, I put masking fluid on the bait, described how I do that real well. Started spraying more colors on the bait over the blue, another layer. Uh, talked all about how I blend colors and stuff and make them look nice. And now we're here. There's good news though. I figured out how to use this camera instead of my phone and there's no bars. What? Are, uh, there's a YouTube video that told me about it. You just adjust some settings in your camera and they're fixed. What a fiasco. So now we're here. Let's put another layer on this bait and teach you guys how to paint. Next step is to put scales on this bait. This is window screen, just normal window screen. Well, it's the stuff with like the nylon or the vi vinyl. 
I don't know what plastic they put on window screen. So you cut out enough to be able to hold the bait in like that because you need to be able to pinch it on the other side. Man, that was a fiasco. I thought for a while I was going to have to do, get a different camera even and like my life was ruined. I should explain what I'm doing here. Um, I'm pinching, I'm getting these clamps to grab enough screen and like pull it. I want this screen pinched tightly against the body of this bait. Oops, oopsie doopsie. Might have pinched a little too tight right there, but I don't care. That's fine, I'll, I'll keep that. I'll paint the tail something, make it darker back there or something. You gotta work with what you're dealt, you know? Something like that happens, you might be able to make something cool from that, you know? Maybe I'll do a big red stripe down the side. People like red stripes. Maybe I'll do that. The point is that that window screen is against the body of that bait nice and tight. And now I'm gonna use usually a pearl. Usually I use a pearl paint for scales. You know what, I'm just gonna use pearl white. Long-eared sunfish are, they don't have a lot of gold. That almost got out of hand. I use a full-size compressor. I should probably mention that. It has a regulator right here. And it comes also up to this regulator with a moisture trap off of it as well. You should use a moisture trap. You don't want moisture coming through the hose into your paint and ruining your paint job. Okay, I think it's dry. I take the top clamps off first. Then I take the outside of the bottom ones off, leaving just the middle. And then it kind of opens up evenly and you don't have to worry about smudging if it isn't dry. And there's the scales. Gorgeous. See? That's all you need. Pearl white. A lot of the time that's the case. I prefer to have scales like this too where they kind of disappear at angles and come back. That's what the pearl is, of course. It's really easy to make a bait look cheesy with like, I don't know, trying to put dark behind light color scales. It's just, it's too hashy, it's too much. I prefer the pearlized scale method myself. Anyway, next course of action. If I were to do gills on this bait, because I didn't put specific blue detail around the gills, where the gills would be, this would just look bad. So no gills on this bait. I need to add black to this bait and then the belly color. It needs more orange on the belly. We're gonna have just black around the eye socket, the top, and the belly. And then I'll show you how I paint a glass eye. You know what? Never mind. I shouldn't treat you guys like you don't know how to paint on glass. You just paint the black pupil and then you spray the red. Okay? You already knew that. And yes, I put super glue down before I put that eye on. Doesn't that look good? That is a solid looking bait. I even put a lot of red on the belly. Blood red. Sadly, everybody, I think that is about the most instructional I can possibly be. I don't think I'm built to do how-tos. I just show you guys what I do. Just got done taking the thumbnail for this video. It's pretty appropriate. Some of my best work really says it all. Clear coat. That's gonna be a beauty. I'm gonna catch some good fish with that one. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. And there we have it, folks. Pretty much skipped half of the uh, painting process. Now go forth. Make a difference in the world. Now that you have been immeasurably enlightened on the ways of painting lures. There is quite a bit going on on that paint job, though. Green fades into red oxide, fades into orange, but then fades back into blood red on the belly. I would have done the gills and remembered to mask everything correctly if I didn't have to deal with these lights and my phone and all that other stuff. I think this video is still worth posting. On to the next bonus fishing. Confidence level zero. It's been a while. It's been a long time since I've caught a fish open water. It has been a while. I'm a little rusty. This spot was a dumb choice. If there's not enough ice on your waters, just ice fish anyway. 
Man, that tungsten's got some weight. Perfectly wrong height for a log to fall. Oh. Whew. Oh, oh, it has been a while. And I snagged it. I snagged a sucker. I was getting all excited. Dang it. Oh well, it's a fish. Be free. It's not even official, I don't like suckers. Nothing's official. I wonder if he was kind of playing with my jig or if I just straight up snagged him and he wasn't even paying attention. I hope the early tur. Why do people say ladder? Man, let's snag another. That'd be a good swim bait to make. A sucker swim bait. Looking all realistic and stuff. That'd be pretty sweet. Maybe I'll get some walleyes at the river. I guess it's just a matter of finding some deeper spots. Because here we are. just reflecting for a while on how badly winter sucks. I touched a fish today though. Isn't that what fishing is all about? Touching fish? On to the next bait. You can think of painting lures as... You're the one with the problem. Your airbrush sucks. I just give up. Really says it all. Now go forth. <laughs> 